Hey guys, this is WKDU 91.7 FM, uh, your non-commercial radio station at Drexel University. We're here to have an interview with Genesis Awusu. Uh Hey, Genesis, how are you today? Yeah, good, good. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I, I have someone painting my bathroom currently at home, doing some <laughs> construction. But Love other that. than that, uh, I'm good. That's good, man. That's good. Love to hear it. How's it been uh, on the road so far for your tour? Yeah, it's been it's been uh, really positive. Like all the shows have gone really well so far. This is probably like my most intensive tour so far. Like um, I don't know, touring America and North America is a lot more intensive than Australia. Um, so I've been doing I've got like nine shows, kind of back to back, essentially doing a lot of lots of driving in a van. So just trying to you know stay strong, stay hardened. For all the shows, yeah. they've, been, they've been going well. Yeah, uh, you your debut album came out in 2021, so you came out during the the period where shows were kind of shut down. So mm. this is your first real big tour, isn't it? This is my second. This is my second headline North America tour, um, but this one's a little bit bigger than the first one. Yeah, any any specific spots that you've hit so far that you've been like, wow, this. I, I want to come back here, like, outside of, like, visiting to do a tour and just, like, actually, like, look around. Um, I'm really, we just got, we've just gotten into Montreal, and I'm really, I'm digging the vibe right now. Uh, I've, I've been doing my little French Duolingo, <laughs> so, so being able to see the, the French signs and stuff is cool. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to, like to check this place out a bit more. Yeah, no, that's, that's sick to hear. What do you think really makes your new record surpass your previous? Uh, I know that your previous gained so many awards and so many uh, nominations because of how eclectic and uh, varied it was. Where do you think this record really lands that like makes it superior or surpass in a different way? I don't really think of uh, my music in, in that kind of light as in like trying to surpass or be superior it's kind of all just like i kind of before the album came out i, I listened to the, the most recent one and then i listened to smiling with no teeth back to back and the best way i can describe it is it's kind of like looking at old school photos of myself maybe like pre-puberty and then like post-puberty and it's just like the way i view my music is it's kind of just like a snapshot in my life at whatever point of time that i'm making it in um and it, it, it's just what makes it good to me is just how it how well I'm able to express what's going on around me or inside me. Um, when I listen to the music, I, when it's really good, when I when I think it's really well made, I can see exactly what was going on. Um, I can remember exactly how I was feeling. So it's more, yeah, it's more of like a, a personal thing like that for me. That's sick. No, that's that's honestly a really interesting way that I don't usually hear other people talk about it, but I like that. A snapshot, that's a very mm -hmm. unique way to to look at it because it really is. I mean, that's you in that mind space. Um, I, I know that in other interviews, you talk about how you kind of took years to make that debut album. And this one was, you wanted to to get it out a lot quicker. Um, how was the process for that? How How much different was it to not have... I don't want to say as much time, but really like try to get it as quickly out. Mm, it was, it was a big challenge. It was a big challenge um, mentally and physically just being like having to literally try and grab the time between all the touring and, and traveling. Um, <clears throat> but I think, um, I think it's probably just what most musicians have to have to deal with. I was just kind of lucky enough in a way weirdly it's it's weird to say lucky enough but lucky enough to do that first album during COVID times where there was nothing else to do really um so uh i kind of got, i guess got used to that luxury um but yeah this was a new challenge for me um but i think you know i think i, I think i achieved and succeeded so I'm, I'm really happy with with how it came out no i i love the production on it really do enjoy it um yeah i wanted to also ask as yeah. someone who got a ton of awards for your debut album um 
do you feel pressure whenever you you release a new single or a project or do you think that there's a certain like difference in mindset since that has happened or do you think do you just try to put it out of your mind and just focus on the work at hand there is a lot of pressure and i do feel that kind of external pressure but what the pressure i was feeling the most was definitely internal where i was like you know smiling with my teeth the first album gained a whole bunch of awards but more than that for me going back to like the personal aspect it was kind of like so many of my most important life memories and experiences and feelings were packed into that album so i didn't want to just make a second album for the sake of making another album i had to feel just as genuine and authentic and i had to say something that i actually wanted to say so that was the pressure for me like kind of figuring out what that was with kind of the clock kind of ticking in a way um yeah that was that was the real pressure i had to deal with more more so than like trying to figure out how many awards this album was going to get or anything like that no i i completely understand that 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 definitely that's a good mindset to have though to put it out and just not worry mm. about that um do you plan on doing anything while you're in Philly? Like anything specific? Do you have any fun plans? Any cheesesteak shops you're going to visit? Or <laughs> No, hit me, hit me with the recs, man. Hit me with the recommendations. Uh, Ishka Bibbles is really good. Highly recommend Ishka Bibbles. Uh, I right. mean, I think the Rocky Steps are kind of... The Philly Art Museum in general is gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Rocky Steps, I think, is like, well, everyone has to go at least once. <laughs> um it is a climb though i will say it is it, you will actually be tired after um but yeah no i i, I would say easily two of the best things and re- the record shops in philly yeah. are so full of life and mm. like actual love for the art that just mm. going in you just immediately you're like oh this is this is nice this okay, is sick. the cool right. place it's Bibbles, rocky steps and record stones got it yeah um, but yeah, outside of your music, I know that you have a fashion line per, um, what made you want to start diving into that? Um, so that, that was like a, a little brand my friends and I started when I was really young. So we don't, we don't really do that anymore, but essentially when I started creating music, I, I kind of started creating as a, just as a whole, I, I started playing with Photoshop. I started designing clothes. I started making music. I started like, um, you know, writing a lot of stuff all at the same time. Um, and not to say that all of it was was good, <laughs> but I just started doing it all at the same time because I kind of, when I started getting creative, I didn't really see them so much as different mediums per se. I kind of just, it was kind of like, I had an idea and maybe i thought okay i have this idea does it work better as a song lyric or on a t-shirt you know maybe this idea works better as a short story than it does as um like a hat design you know so i kind of just wanted to play with all these different mediums as a way to truly get my thoughts and expressions out in the the best way and music just happened to be the one that kind of took off so that's what i'm more known for Uh, but yeah, I just loved playing with with all of these different forms of expression. That's sick. Um, I know that uh, interesting that you said short stories because I know that um, you talk a lot about like having short stories within your album itself, whether it be the Roach and the most recent record. Um, does do you think how do you create these characters really um, when you're like thinking about this album? Mm. Um, I don't. I honestly don't really know they kind of just come to me um the roach the roach specifically was probably more influenced by um franz kafka metamorphosis um you know story where the dude turns into a huge vermin or pest yeah um so yeah that, that was probably a big inspiration for the character of the roach but also i just thought it was a cool symbol for what i was going for you know this little creature that's surrounded and uh, by forces that are so looming and, and much bigger than it is but has to manage to cr- crawl through the cracks and crevices and survive um and always does you know 
that character sounded like a roach to me. So why not make it a roach? Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know where they really come from. Kind of channels from, from somewhere else and then comes through me and ends up being music. Do you ever plan on maybe exploring other mediums, like, I don't know, writing or... Uh... I know that you explore some mediums with music videos. Do you ever mm. plan on doing more concepts with those? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like um, throughout this album process, I realized that I really just love storytelling. And throughout my life, the medium has changed. So when I was really young, I started writing short stories. And then in my teenage years, I started writing poetry. And then it moved to music and albums. Um, but throughout that whole process, I was just telling stories in different ways. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if music isn't the last thing I do. I might want to start trying to tell stories through furniture, <laughs> like through sculpture or, or, you know, something like that. Um, I'm definitely interested in, in exploring a bunch of different stuff. A giant wooden statue of a roach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, but yeah, I also wanted to ask, this is, this is something I was very interested in. Um, I know that your your first album had a really, really interesting, crazy cover of you with the bandages and the teeth. Um, I'm just wondering what inspired this more minimalist type of look for the cover art for this album? Mm. Um, well, like I said, uh, the album was partly inspired by uh, Franz Kafka. It's also partly inspired by um, Samuel Beckett, Waiting for the Doe, um, Albert Camus. And these are all kind of absurdist. Uh, this is all like absurdist literature and absurdist theater. And absurdism is kind of like this philosophy where we recognize how we're so um, so fraught to to try and make meaning and, and order out of everything when we're surrounded by such chaos and disorder. And it's, it, it can kind of plague us in a way to, to what, ask why these things are happening. Like, what is the meaning to all of this? And absurdism as, as a philosophy is kind of just like, it doesn't matter. Like, the sun rose today. It looks really beautiful. That sunset is really beautiful. You know, my girlfriend is sitting right here and I love her. That's like... It, you don't explain those kind of things. They just are and they're great and they're beautiful. So live that and accept that. You don't need to put all this lofty grand meaning and, and all of that to it. So the album cover kind of relates to that in the way where, you know, it's a red line with a red box. The red line could represent the roach versus the God character. It could represent earth. It could represent the fires of hell or it could just be absolutely nothing. It, it doesn't really matter i thought i just felt like that you know when i was making the album cover i had a whole bunch of different options that were super cinematic and you know more akin to the smiling motif cover but i just felt like that one really encapsulated what the the overall philosophy of the album was yeah no that's that's a great way to put it um I really like the cover. I kept on staring at it for like a couple like minutes, just like looking at it. It just kind of sucked me in for for a bit the first time I saw it. But no, it's it's really sick. Um, but um, now that we're getting close to the end, it's a pretty short interview. <laughs> but now that we're getting close to the end, I wanted to ask: um, Has there been any music that you've been listening to recently that you've been like, "Wow, this makes me want to push myself even further"? to mm. to to explore even more or anything like that or it could be something that comfort music that you're listening to mm. um let me see i've been uh i really loved the new teaser touchdown album that album was like um it felt like a person who had discovered childlike wonder <laughs> in the form of music and it was like beautiful to listen to um I really liked the Turnstile, Bad, Bad, Not Good little EP, remix EP. It was so uh, good. Yeah, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Idols, a lot of Eve Two More. Um, the Berserk, the soundtrack, 
Berserk is like one of my favorite like animes from the nineties. I'm listening to the soundtrack. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I love I love Berserk so much. Yeah. I am I'm so happy that they're back. Um but yes. yeah, you've uh, just been listening to the nineteen ninety soundtrack. Yeah. That shit yeah. that shit goes hard. Oh so man. So now the good. vocals are I, I really do wonder how if they ever do adapt it, I hope they keep the same exact soundtrack. It's just so yeah. just remaster it. You don't yeah. you don't need yeah. to like change much. No, no, it was it's it's beautiful. It's it's incredible. Um but yeah, those are those are just a few things that I've been I've been spinning back uh lately. That's that's been really inspiring to me. That's super cool. Well, um this has been an awesome interview. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, hopefully, I'll see you at Philly. And uh, everyone, definitely stream Genesis Wusu's newest album. Uh, check it out. It's great. Um, and yeah, this has been WKDU 91.7 FM, Drexel University's only non-commercial radio station. Till next time.